Hello my friends, Paul here in the Rojovi Music Workshop and welcome to the first uh, shop update of 2023, uh, the January shop update. Um, it's been probably a month since I've uploaded my last video and probably seven or eight weeks since I've done the last shop update. Um, as most of you all know, we closed for Christmas and New Year. We closed for two weeks, and uh, you know, literally as soon as we came back, it just got really busy again. And um, it's, it's been a little bit up and down this month. We've we've gained some new students. We've um, some students have dropped, uh, not not because they don't like us or anything, but some of them are travelling. Some of them are um, studying in in other other areas of the country. Uh, there's a few few different reasons, and um, so it's been a little bit up and down this month. Um, but we are um, we are expecting a few few more students, new students this month, and um, well, sorry, next month, February. Uh, it's the 30th of January today. Um, we are expecting um, a few new students, and, and many of our existing students are going to uh, re-enrol. Um, so it, it should be a, a pretty good month in February. Um, January itself was not, not the best. Never is really, is it? Um, so we're, we should be fine. Um, so latest gadgets, gizmos, tools, uh, various bits and pieces, um, some mini projects that I've done and my next project which I have to be honest, is probably going to be my biggest and most challenging project to date. Uh, more on that later. So, um, uh, so for this new project, I've been ordering a few parts that, you know, I've still got a few more to order as well and some to still arrive. And I've calculated I'm um, spending in the region of 5,000 Thai baht on parts for this project. 5,000 baht is about um, current exchange rate around about 125 pounds. Um, so what's that? 135 euros, 140 dollars, something like that. I'm not sure. Um, so quite a lot of money I'm spending just on the parts. And um, as I said, it's going to be one of my most challenging projects to date, if not the most. And it's going to take me a few weeks. And I'm going to take my time over it and do it, you know, do it properly. There's, there's, I want to basically pull out all the stops on this and you know test all of my skills and some that I haven't even tried yet so you know it's going to be quite a project but as I said more on that later so some of the parts I've already ordered um, I've got some tuners I've got bridges I've got bone saddle blanks I've got bone nut blanks I've got um, pickups all sorts of bits and pieces and as I said there's, there's a, a lot more to come yet as well um, okay, so tools. Um, so this is the saw that I always use um, for cutting the fret slots in, in the fretboards. So it's, it's a fret saw, and you know you can see I've had it for a while. It's you know it's a bit rusty on the back and the, the handle's all grimy, but you know I always keep the the blade um, clean and lubricated. It is a bit dirty at the moment. I need to clean it up again. Um, but it, it's a great saw, it's perfect for the job. Um, the only problem I'm finding is that um, sometimes when I, when I cut the fret slots and then I go to put the frets in, they're a little bit loose fitting, some of them, and they, they don't always seat properly. And, you know, I, I'm getting a few issues with that. So I decided to buy another saw. Um, so this, this is the new one that I bought. Nice looking saw. Uh, it's about about the same size as, as the original one, more or less. Um, but you can see it's got a detachable handle, uh, sorry, a detachable blade, and it also came with a spare blade, which is amazing. Um, so, a couple of differences. First of all, let me just uh, measure the thickness of my old saw. Okay. So I'm going to use my digital calipers here, and I'm, I'm going in metric because that's what I I prefer. So, let's just squeeze that up, so, yeah, so you see you're looking at around about half a millimetre, it won't sit, well, hold on, about half a millimetre thick, which is the right size for fret slots. So, now let's measure the blade on the new saw. 
thickness of the blade on the new saw. Hold on, one second. There we go. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's playing up a little bit, but it's a quarter of a millimeter. So the old one, half a millimeter thick, which is uh, approximately twenty thousandths of an inch. The new one. A quarter of a millimetre thick, so half the thickness, um, that's about ten thousandths of an inch. And it, it is, you know, it is pretty flimsy, and that's one of the reasons for, for this, it keeps it a bit more sturdy. So it's half the thickness of my old saw. Um, it's a little bit uh, narrower in depth as well, but that, that's fine. And the, the old saw, the teeth point forward, so it's a forward cutting saw. This one they point backwards, so it's a backward cutting saw. Or pull, it cuts on the pull, and this one cuts on the push. Um, and the, the teeth on the new, new one are much smaller and finer as well, so that it is going to be a better saw. And as I said, it even came with a spare blade. So uh, I'm quite looking forward to trying that out, and you know, seeing how the frets fit in the slots after using that new saw. Um, I mean, you think ten thousandths of an inch or quarter of a millimeter? It's not very much. It's not going to stop the frets going in to the slots. It's going to make them fit tighter and more snug, and they will seat properly and hold themselves in place better. Um, the only the only thing you have to watch out for with that is if you're cutting the fret slots a little bit smaller than the fret tangs. As you put all the frets in, sometimes it can make the fretboard, you know, bow backwards. So you've got to be careful of that and watch out for that. So I will be the first time I use it. Uh, okay, next one is, this, this is my levelling beam, which I recently changed the sandpaper on. Uh, this is a 15 inch beam, uh, 15 centimetre or 6 inch, and I needed a bigger one. So there it is, and that one is uh, 20 centimetre or 8 inch. I did want to get a, a bigger one still, maybe 25 or 30 centimetres, uh, 10 to 12 inch, but I was unable to get one. I think that one will be fine. It was supposed to come with a spare sandpaper. It didn't, so I ordered some more, which I'll just put on with double-sided tape when I need to. Uh, okay, so I haven't got it to hand, but um, my uh, fret crowning file, which has three different gauges around it, um, it's pretty good, uh, it does the job, not always <coughs> as well as I would like, and when I bought my uh, fret rocker, which I, I think I showed in a previous episode, pretty sure I did, anyway I've got a fret rocker, um, this came with it, and it, it's, uh, it's another fret crowning file, this one is double sided, so there's a, there's a channel in there with the, the file inside it, and the same the other side. It does look to me as though they're both exactly the same size. They might not be, but maybe not. Actually, I think one side is slightly bigger. So th those are the, the channel in there with the, the file inside. And the edges here, both sides, were really sharp. So I filed those away a bit and, and you know sanded them to make them smooth. Um, I haven't tried it yet, but I'll be looking forward to trying that and see what it's like what it's like. Uh, okay, now, these uh, frets, uh, nut slot files, not fret slot files, nut slot files, um, I bought these cheap, nasty set a couple of years ago, and they're absolute rubbish. Useless for the job, to be honest, because they're just, if you look carefully at the edge of each one, it's not even consistent width, you know, they seem to go thicker and thinner, and they're just absolutely useless. So I bought some new ones. I'm not going to bin these because they're handy files. They're just no good for the, the purpose they're meant for. So I bought this new set. Uh, the brand is Hosco, Japanese, I think. Yep, yeah, Japanese. Um, and this is a, a set of ten. Uh, and these are in thousandths of an inch. They start at ten thousandths and go up to fifty-six thousandths. And there's there's ten of them. So they go like ten. Uh, I think 12, 16, 20, 22, you know, the sort of the, the standard string gauge sizes, uh, right up to 56. Um, so, you know, again, I haven't used these yet, um, but 
I did a lot of research before buying these and you know I've seen people using them they're absolutely fantastic um, and I, I had to get these from uh, a company in the UK uh, some of you may have heard of the Crimson Guitars based in Dorset um, so you know that it's they're, they're luthiers they run a guitar luthiery school uh, they're, they're setting up a museum, guitar museum, all sorts of things, you know, and, and they do vintage tools and it's, you know, fantastic bunch of guys. Based in Dorset, Crimson Guitars and the head honcho is called Ben Crow. So you should check them out, they're really, really good. Anyway, so I'm really looking forward to using those, cannot wait, because they are the absolute mutts nuts, these things. And as I said, I got them from, from the UK, so to buy these, plus shipping, plus international um, bank transfer fees, these cost me £136. That's about $150 stroke euros, thereabouts. So, you know, I didn't just spend that money without researching these first. And, you know, I've seen many professionals using these and they are amazing. And I know that they're going to work absolutely perfectly. A little better than these tragic things. Uh, okay, tools, I think that's it. Yes. Okay, so, uh, sorry, no, there is one more tool. <laughs> Almost forgot. I got myself a bench drill at last. There. Um, so, it, it wasn't all that expensive, probably in the region of, I don't know, under 50 quid. Um, and I was really surprised when it arrived at just how sturdy and heavy duty it is. <coughs> and it's got, for those of you who know about these things, it's got a, a, um, a compartment at the top, you lift up the lid and you can change the speed settings. It's got two sets of uh, pulleys, so one steps uh, up bigger sizes and the other one steps down to smaller sizes, so you know, like gears on a bike, uh, bicycle. Um, so you can change the, the, the belt for different speeds and it's, it's a cracking little bit of kit. And, uh, you know, when you, when you compare it to the one that I was using before, this old thing, <laughs> it's like twice the size and about five times the weight. And, you know, it's the proper job. And again, I'm not going to bin this because I've got, I've got a use in mind for this, which will be in a later video. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this, you know, this is a proper bit of kit. And it's, it's got some weight to it. It's a sturdy bit of kit. And it was inexpensive so but as I said this I've got another use for um, I've also uh, let me just gently turn you around I built myself another workbench here um, it's about two meters long a little bit more um, so I had some old uh, shelving units pretty pretty heavy duty stuff so I wasn't using them I thought I'll make make another bench out of them so that's what I did um, that didn't take me long probably so an hour or two, not long. Uh, okay, so time is against us. Where are we for time? 13 minutes. Okay. So I just want to show you uh, some of the little mini projects that I did over the past, well, this month, um, January. Uh, I didn't bother to film them because they were kind of, you know, experimental anyway. Just, and they were just a couple of little fun things that I put together. In fact, the first one took me about an hour to make, and there it is. <laughs> uh, a little kanjo, I guess you'd call it, single string, um, with a well-known brand of uh, breath freshening mints, made out of that. <laughs> and I've actually made two of them, um, but this one, uh, this is the second one, I made it with a longer neck. and. Uh, Pretty good volume for the tiny little thing it is. I mean, you know, this one's the size of my, well, smaller than my hand. <laughs> and, you know, this, so that was the first one. That took me about an hour. This one took me about 40 minutes to make, from, from start to finish, about 40 minutes. Um, and they're a little bit of fun, you know. And um, the way you play these, I mean, there's no, they're too small to, to have a fretboard on. They would just, the frets would just be too close together. It would be impossible to play. So these steel tube, 
It's basically a little mini slide guitar. <laughs> I haven't learned to play a tune on it yet, but yeah, it's just a little bit of fun, you know. And I enjoyed making those, as I said, they took me a total of under two hours to make both of them. So I decided to go, you know, a little bit better and I made one out of wood. Um, this, this thing is 12 inches or 30 centimeters long. And um, I bought this box. It came with little um, rubber um, stamps. Is that what you call them? You dip it in ink and then, you know, uh, yeah, anyway. So, you know, I'd al alphabet stamp or stamp alphabet. So it's, you know, a little box, not even as big as my hand. And um, I handmade the neck. <laughs> oh, it's so fun. <laughs> and with this one, I put sound holes in the side. So, you know, the box is glued together. Um, it's got a real bone sa uh, yeah, saddle. Um, the, the nut is actually made of, um, it's either rosewood or ebony. It's, it's probably not ebony, rosewood, I think. Uh, single tuner again, uh, and this is this is the same thing, you know, just a little bit of fun. <laughs> so there's those little things. Um, that one probably took me a total of about two, maybe three hours, you know, and that's not including glue drying time. But you know, there was a lot of time in, in making this neck, um, you know, hand carved all of it. Yeah, bit of fun. <laughs> okay, so the last thing I want to talk about briefly is my next project. As I said, I've already ordered a few parts for it. I've got ma many more parts still to come. And um, it's, it's going to be based on this last one that I made, uh, the cigar box guitar. So this this box, I mean, if you look in the sound hole, you can see that's a chunky bit of box. <laughs> all, all of the wood on this, apart from the, the back, is half an inch thick, 13 mil. Um, and the size of this box uh, length is uh, 12 and a half inch, so what's that? 32, 10 over, 30, 31 and a half centimeters, and width. Um, just over six inches or uh, 15 and a half centimeters. So roughly 30, wait, 31 by 15 centimeters, thereabouts. Uh, and that's the size of the box. Um, and, and I, you know, I, I lowered it this way. So the next project is kind of based on that. And I've, I've made a start on the body. <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of the same thing, um, but this is two of them with the sides, with one side of each taken off and then glued together. <coughs> so if we look inside, you know, it's, it's basically one big box, it's two of them glued together, just taking off the side, you know, one side of each box. And, uh, the, you know, the inside is still as it came. So that's kind of before, but I've taken some time to sand the outside. Um, I've gone right up to, I started at 80 grit, then went to 40, um, and then I went 400, 600, 800, 1000, 1200, 1500, and then 7000. And that's as smooth as glass. So, you know, that's, that's basically before, and that is after, because it is finished in some kind of beautiful orange stain. <laughs> so I sanded all that off. Um, so that's the beginnings of my next project. And as you can see, it's a bit bigger than this one. So what's it going to be? Have to wait and see. Um, you know, I'm not going to actually start the project until I've got all of the, the parts here. <coughs> you know, uh, and that's for two reasons. One, so that I can, you know, I'm not waiting for bits and, you know, to do the next part. I can just get on and do it. But also, I do need a lot of the parts that haven't arrived yet for, you know, for measuring up and, you know, all that kind of thing. I'm not going to give too much away, but that will be my next project. And um, I will do another shop update as well. 
not exactly sure when, but obviously sometime in February, because it will be the February shop update. And uh, you know there will be various other bits and pieces on there, uh, including um, another tool, a big one, <laughs> uh, and a few other bits and pieces. And by then, um, I should have all of the parts I need for this project, and then I will reveal what it's going to be. And uh, some of you might have already guessed, but um, that will be in the next shop update, the February shop update. I'll, you know, show all the parts that I've got for this project and, uh, you know, explain what, it, what it's going to be. Um, and as I said, it is going to be quite a long project because I'm going to take my time and do it really, really well. And it is going to be challenging. <laughs> it's not something I've done before, um, but it's something I'm going to do now. Okay, so that's it for, for now, and um, we will hopefully see you very soon. And uh, in the meantime, please look after yourselves, look after each other, and we will see you soon. Peace out. <laughs>